Hey everyone, welcome back to the, our further studies into the V steganography that's surrounding 2020, uh, what Cliff High has called year zero. Uh, today I've got so, a lot of ground to cover. Uh, I've got a script that I've written here. I'm going to do my best to follow it actually in the best order I can. And also lead everybody to the playlist to get everybody kind of caught up to this point. I made two playlists on my channel. Uh, since uh, since my last video, one is about is the stuff I was doing last year, all the way into kind of the new year period, with when we started to change topics from just the general Earth control grid network and into what it means for the V steganography as we're seeing it literally in front of our eyes in year zero. And uh, so I've got two playlists to get everybody caught up. If you haven't seen my previous videos, you can just boom go here. I'll link them in the description. Watch these in order. It goes all the way from the Earth Grid Control Network through Q. Some of the topics we are, we're going to cover today, in fact, to reference back here. And then more importantly, um, to get caught up on everything that is is kind of uh, consequential to this video and the aftermath of the Super Bowl. Because um, where I'm going to go with this video today, there are a lot of topics that are starting to tie together. We have the Super Bowl ritual, which is tied with the economic situation, I guess we'll call it. Is it a collapse? Is it a transition? It's, it's definitely tied to the FASB 56 uh, 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 congressional law that was passed last year during the Brett Kavanaugh hearings and, and the Solari report and Catherine Austin Fitz work and Bix Weir's work, believe it or not, with the Road to Ruta. And that's the stuff I'm gonna cover starting with the Super Bowl ritual is with Bix Weir stuff, guys. I want to get through a lot of these topics. We're going to end with the FASB 56 stuff. The China coronavirus stuff is thrown into the right into the mix, into the middle of it. And the Boeing woes and how Seattle factors into all this Super Bowl stuff um, with the Seahawks and, and the Chiefs and all this stuff, I'm going to show all that. But in order for us to get through it, I've got to kind of go in order. We're going to use... This gematria index, these are terms that you've probably seen. If you've seen, if you go through these other videos, you'll, these last few, I've been referencing some gematria terms. And today we're gonna use this more like an index to, to reference every once in a while. And, and Bix, this is for you, dude. Um, we're gonna decode kind of the Satoshi Nakamoto situation along with this Super Bowl ritual in the Wizard of Oz. Because, uh, dude, you, I mean, you're. I, I've got his, well, I'm a subscriber to his service, so I have uh, I've got access to the articles he's done on the Wizard of Oz. And guys, I I wish I could even link this stuff to you. Uh, just know that I'm going to be you know referring you over to his site so you can kind of learn about some of this stuff uh, in his in his movie The Tin Man because it factors into the V steganography that we do on this channel. Uh, and we're going to get to this after the Super Bowl ritual to, to show you how it all connects. Um, but to plug him, we're going to be referencing in the very Super Bowl ritual this Wishes and Rainbows Road to Ruta theory. And I'm going to show you how it's blatantly right in front of our eyes where the Wizard of Oz stuff factors in and melds with Bix Weir. Um, and uh, so I guess we might as well just dive into here. So anybody who's read his stuff and knows about the Wizard of Oz knows the Emerald City is is the theme here for you know where the the yellow, the yellow brick road leads and again guys the Bix Weir stuff is is wonderful I've got the sound turned off on the Super Bowl thing because it's going to get a copyright claim otherwise so we're going to be watching this without sound I'm guessing everybody can go get the Super Bowl video I'll link this in the description too but I'm starting at the 8 minute and 17 mark um, because this is actually where the Emerald City ritual begins. And uh, this is actually where they're introducing Jennifer Lopez. I think uh, back at the beginning, you've got Shakira. The one, the one image that was striking with Shakira is that she was in rope. Um, some sort of bondage with rope right here. And she kind of casts it off. And of course, that goes back to the tarot, the devil card we've talked about with the X and the V steganography. We'll get to that by the end of the video too. But at the 817 mark, we have uh, the Emerald City ritual starting to play out. And here comes Jennifer Lopez. 
And just like in the Tin Man analysis that Bixweir does, you've got the silver kind of uh, witch character here. And clearly all of the green uh, Emerald City symbology. We're, we're not going to go too deep into this stuff because we do have a lot of ground to cover. There's a ton to cover here, but she does this whole cross ritual. She, you know, like silver's kind of, you know, crucified up here and all of these people down below are the slaves. That's what the bondage with the, with the devil card was all about, was the bondage. You have all these people enslaved by the silver rig. And I'll pause it right there. That's our first term of the day, Sesame Street style, silver rig. And as you guys can see, I, concepts we've covered in, in the channel, I've already pointed to in, in my playlist, The Star of David, which is the Merkaba. This is the energy structure underneath the earth that Cliff Hyde's talked about, um, which where he talks about Samuel Warren Carey's work, the expanding earth, Nikola Tesla, the Star Wars program, and also all of these are 119, 119, 119, 11, just like 9-11, the reverse of 9-11. When did the repo market start to collapse? 9-11 of this year. When did Nikola Tesla's technology, Star Wars space program technology that was installed in the 80s in the Reagan administration under the Bushes? Like we've covered on this channel, guys, just again, watch the playlist. Using Nikola Tesla's technology, uh, this is how they're tying in, of course, some of these gematria terms to these very rituals. But anyway, Bondage of slavery by slavery by the silver rig kept the, the economic system is keeping everybody da uh, enslaved, right? So we we continue on with this video. She kind of spins around, whatever. Here, she it's 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 worth me saying. Um, she's singing. Uh, oh, waiting for tonight. Waiting for tonight is the song she's singing, and this was interesting to me because we've got this whole concept of year zero. And year zero is 2020. And we also know that this the Super Bowl was on Groundhog's Day on 2-2-2020. Two, two, and, the, and, the, and so you have numerology of 22 on both because zeros get canceled out. So the year 2020 and 2-2, two, two, what is she waiting for tonight? What is the ritual saying? What are, what are, what are the wizards that are controlling these, these rituals saying about waiting for tonight? Is there some sort of transition regarding silver that happened on, this, on the second in terms of markets? Because another video that I'm going to reference is Greg Gammon here. And we'll go back to this after the Super Bowl video is over. But Starting with this coronavirus stuff, we all of a sudden have a China component here that's related to some sort of economic warfare. Waiting for tonight, was there was there supposed to be something timed with this Super Bowl ritual that that we don't know about that has something to do with a new paradigm regarding year zero? See all of these 22 lineups. And you go, you go over here, we've got plenty of 22 lineups with the CFTC and Apple and Nazi. Um, and uh, I've, I've lined these up the best I can, but, but we have the, oh, the F-22 Raptors being, being retired in 2012, like we've covered in other videos. Um, it seems like also the reset scenario, reset was 22. There you, and, this, and that was what I was talking about with this year zero, this 2-2, two, two, this uh, February 2nd, which was Groundhog's Day. By the way, guys, Groundhog Day, um, we have some real interesting stuff regarding, and Bix, this is another one for you, dude, Bart Chilton. And I'm, I'm, if you don't know much about gematria, this, this is the encoding of uh, the Hebrew practice of encoding letters into numbers, and the elite ritualized this stuff. The very wizards that you, that you talk about in your video, dude, they use these codes. Uh, so they tie all of these events together. And this Kansas City and San Francisco were playing in the Super Bowl. Bart Chilton is related to this whole silver rig process uh, by way of this. And, and we'll get more into the gematria as we go along. But the video, I got to keep playing because there's just there's so much stuff packed in this. We got to get to it. So waiting for tonight's the song and all of a sudden, boom. The ground falls away, the emerald ground falls away, and a Tesla coil is revealed. Literally a friggin' Tesla coil. As if the old system is falling apart, year zero component, right? We've, we're, and Cliff Heist talked about this in his data, where 
the future of the 2020s, the soaring 20s, it's going to be a weird friggin' time. And Niagara Falls, poor, this is all Tesla symbology because you've got the Tesla coil in the middle and Niagara Falls, the famous, the famous uh, generator system that he built and intuited out of his dreams using the hydraulics of Niagara Falls. So we've got the Emerald City component. Seattle, remember, if, you, if, you, if anybody knows anything about Seattle, it's called the Emerald City. You're going to see how this plays in. Um, so the ground falls away. Niagara Falls pours in. All the, all the Nikola Tesla new paradigm. And by the way, I've got this pulled up again. Remember, go see this movie, The Current War. Because The Current War is the current war being fought in the shadows. It's all about Tesla's technology versus this Edison paradigm that we're under right now, okay? And so this is another hint, this movie that came out this last year, very kind of underneath the radar. It's mostly about Westinghouse and Edison and, and Tesla was only on the side. But this movie, guys, is the whole, the whole steganographic or maybe not as much steganographic with this, but symbol, symbolic component of this is that it, this is the current war being fought, this proxy war of economic and new technology paradigm proportions. And that's what we're getting here with this rituals. And, and silver is, we're still being, we're still enslaved to the silver system here as, as we're coming in. So this guy comes in and Bix, you'll love this dude. If, if you ever watch this video, this guy comes in with a shirt that says made in Medellin. But if you look at his shirt, it's a flower. It's a rainbow flower. And remember, guys, I was showing you his site here. Or was it? Oh, it was this one. Wishes and Rainbows. The whole concept of this, of this Fed comic book that got released is that Colorland is going to be reestablished out of the black and white, which is, which is the gold standard and this representation of gold standard. Who else was playing in the Super Bowl again but the 49ers? with the gold, the gold rush situation. And, and it, it, just to go back, we'll find, uh, I think, uh, 49ers in here somewhere. Where was it? I put Titanic in here because this is all, because Titanic was all connected as well with, with these events. Um, I guess and I'll show you how that works, but where was the, I don't know if I put the 49er, the 49er one in here. But, I, but it, what it was really all about, of course, was Joe Montana. And, and uh, because he played for both San Francisco and, and the Chiefs. Uh, we'll get into that again, I guess. I keep going away from this. But Bix, um, if you look at his shirt, this is his shirt. And uh, I, that's another video I don't want. You can just see on the shirt the color land flower is all I'm getting at. It, it, it matches up with the road to Ruta theory. And so what he comes in to do, he's got the black shirt, which represents the black oil in, in the comic book. And then he's got the, the color land flower. It says made in Medellin. He's, he's a Colombian rapper. I, got, I looked into him. His name is Jay Balvin. Um, but he comes on to stage anyway with all these other flowers behind him. And he's dancing around and she's doing her seductress thing. Now we don't have anybody in bondage anymore. Now we've got women dancing around there. You know, they don't seem to be enslaved like the dudes were almost. Now they're kind of, you know, they're in sync with her. They're not like bowing down to her. They're harmonizing with it somehow. This, you know, this, I think it's the ISIS energy that's be coming in. So here he comes. Um, he comes over to Silver. And kind of twerks on silver here as if to say, oh, yeah, you know, he's uh, this this thing is in control of the silver price or the sil you know, the silver rigging, essentially. So he comes in and he kind of, yeah, he, he does this thing with her. And silver is everywhere, as you can see. And. Uh, Let's see here if I can get back. 
some more stuff happens. Some, th then, then the slaves come back in, right? And then, uh, and then this girl, she comes in, she with this golden microphone, and then here's the feminine uh, energy again, right? Silver American flags everywhere. All these little girls, and uh, I don't know what these represent. But Shakira comes back in. She enters stage. Remember, it was Shakira's birthday on February 2nd. She was performing in the Super Bowl. It was her 43rd birthday. But this, this you know, teenage something girl comes in. Shakira's now dressed in gold. But as you can see, after all this ritual is played out with the transition of the Wizard of Oz and the Emerald City collapsing and, and all this stuff, is that gold is secondary to the silver. And this is where it gets really weird. Jennifer Lopez comes out. She's draped in the Puerto Rican flag with the American flag on the back. Guys, this was huge because as you can see, she's got the fifth, she's got the Star Spangled Banner on the back side of this, but, but as she opens it, it's Puerto Rico, okay? Now, this is huge as it relates to the Road to Ruta theory, I think. Bix, I've never heard you talk about the, the, con the second constitution in the United States much from 1871 where the United States was formed under the Vatican, the, the Vatican as a corporation, um, where the Pope basically dictated this, this Constitution of the United States of America uh, Act of 1871, whereby which the, the state now called the District of Columbia, located in 10 square miles, blah, 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 was to be the capital of this, of this corporation. As it says here, I'll, I'll post both of these, these references, the U.S. government incorporated as a for-profit commercial enterprise in the legislative act of February 21st of 1871. 41st Congress, Session 3, blah, blah, blah. Um, AKA, U.S. incorporated a commercial agency originally designated as Washington, D.C. So originally designated as Washington, D.C. Again, if you go back to this original playlist, guys, you'll learn all about the DC Parasite Network. Florida Mock, he's the one who really discovered the extent of the network and kind of tied it all in. I just did my I just did my diligence to tie it into what it meant for the Earth Control Grid Network as well. But you've got to go look at that stuff to kind of get the complete picture on the DC Parasite Network. But anyway, this is where it started. The United States is located in the District of Columbia and the Secretary of Treasury of Puerto Rico, this is real important, was appointed receiver of, at the time, the bankrupt United States and the reorganization plan number 26 in 1950. So Title V, United States Code, so it's Title V, of course, um, and states the Secretary of the Treasury of Puerto Rico, Title 27 Code of Regulations, and the title of the Secretary of Treasury is a euphemistic abbreviation of the actual title, Secretary of the, of the Treasury of Puerto Rico. And all this is truly saying is, is that the United States Corporation and all of its treasury functions are based out of Puerto Rico. And when you go back again to this, to this whole silver thing, gold walks back into the stage, the Puerto Rican flag is, is central to it, telling you exactly I think what's about to befall us, I, you know, Bix's theories are very sound with, with this Road to Ruta stuff, guys, and the Wishes and Rainbows uh, comic book that the Fed released is, is kind of foretelling all of this Wizard of Oz stuff. And what's, what else is really wild, because we're all about the V steganography, of course, on this channel, and if you don't know anything about the V steganography, Again, I encourage you to go back and look at uh, previous videos I've done that all kind of tie back through this meme. I always, I always tie it central to Nikola Tesla in this meme. But that the, the V, the fifth element, the ether, is, is truly what's behind this transition. And that's, what's, that's the concept, I guess, the steganography concept. Steganography being the practice where those that know how to cast spells, wizards, can transcribe uh, secret meanings and symbols into, uh, into the very uh, character, I guess, and play kind of like, again, I'll bring up the V tarot card, the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is all about religions, organizations, behind the shadows, control grids. Um, we'll get into that stuff at the end of the video. But uh, what's wild about Bix Weir's 
Oz great and powerful thing is that his 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 Tin Man, um, his Glinda versus Evanora fight battle sequence is real similar in Oz the Great and Powerful in 2013, and then the Tin Man, uh, the Tin Man stuff that he does is all about silver and gold as well. And look, I just wanted to come down here without giving away his work or anything. I'm trying to be real careful about that because you guys really should subscribe to his stuff. Um, but the the pentagram in the middle of the Tin Man movie poster. So the V steganography is right there, front and center. And, uh, you know, my picture's got messed but messed back with around but I, I gotta bring this one back up the pentagram and this is where the v steganography all comes together and remember i'm going to go back to the gematria after this so i can show how some of this stuff factors in again to the road to ruta theory um but the 36 degrees uh this is a perfect v this is the lambda this is this is the the greek character of the lambda which measures a lot of functions of the ether uh, and then you've got the 72 degrees and the 108 degrees that all make up um, these, I guess they would be, uh, uh, I've, I, I, I would forget the name. I, I'm, for, I'm not re quite remembering the name of the triangle. But uh, all of this is to say when you go back, especially to the ritual that was the Super Bowl this year, um, it all ties back again to Glass Steagall, guys. The Glass Steagall, the Glass Steagall Act all ties in. What I'm, what I would argue again is Super Bowl 48, Super Bowl 50, 52, 54, and what we're going to get with Super Bowl 56 is all a connected ritual. It's all the even years, and there seems to be a common through line of economic collapse through all of them. That if we pick apart all of the information, we can see the whole picture, and so. Um, what uh, what I would what I would look at first is uh, going back to the Emerald City. Okay, the Emerald City is Seattle. Okay, Seattle, Chief Seattle, is an, who is named after, is a curious term. Because, and, and, and the other fact of the matter that Boeing is based in Seattle, and that if you remember, I was showing um, in the last video as well, the 1979 eclipse that came in over Seattle. And this is all, and the, the Super Bowl was all moon ritual. Silver is the moon, right? Sil the silver is also the color of the moon. So Joe Montana, being the player that was drafted in 1979 and also the player that played for the San Francisco 49ers and the Chiefs, also central to this ritual, as well as Warren Moon being the player who, who also played on the Kansas City Chiefs, Seattle Seahawks, Minnesota Vikings, and Houston Oilers. We've, we've gone into why that matters in, in the previous videos as well, but the curious thing was his, his name is the moon, right? It, or in moon. So this is where we start to tie it all together. When gematria matches values, we know the harmonics are similar and we know there's a common through line. So we've got some concepts that we can throw into this cipher here and start picking it apart and see where the economic collapse pieces really start to start to come back into play, especially as we're looking at Tesla and Boeing. And we're not, I mean, aside from the silver rig, which again, to kind of review, Let's start with silver rig. We've we've gone through some 119 stuff as it relates to these programs that are put into place with Star Wars using Nikola Tesla's technology, the new paradigm for the Space Force. I mean, the other the stuff that was uh, the stuff that was going on in the last couple of weeks with the public Space Force and of course the Space Force logo showing a perfect lambda there and it's the entirety of of this whole section of the golden ratio there's no mistaking what 
they're deriving their technology from, this dielectric field theory stuff that this dude gave us, <laughs> all right? Uh, so this is what's being occluded, but also brought out into view with these types of rituals. We're, we're, we've got, and then on the side, again, we've got the economic warfare going on with China. But first things first, tying the Emerald City with St. Louis, which is where the Vatican rules the Fed from, the Cardinals, right? The Vatican Cardinals. So we've got the, the that's what we're tying the, the Act of 1871 in Puerto Rico, the Corporation of the United States with, is with St. Louis, where that Fed office is located, where the Cardinal rules. And we have Emerald City Chief Seattle, which Seattle is named after, who is a Native American, which is why, of course, we also have the Native American looking Seattle Seahawks logo, which in this case represents, you know, the B-52 or the, the B-2 bomber and all that from the previous videos, if you go back to those playlists. Um, we also have year zero matching up with 50 and 113 with Chief Seattle. And of course, 2020 is year zero. 50 is another curious one as it relates to the Super Bowl ritual because the Chiefs, of course, it had been 50 years since they were in a Super Bowl. Super Bowl IV was the last time they were in a Super Bowl and, and they won it 23 to seven over the Vikings. One of the teams that Moore and Moon played for uh, and, and also uh, was, if I can find the term, Oh, I can't find it. It's purple and gold is what it was. Oh, here it is down here. It was purple and gold. Okay. And purple and gold has a lot to do with this ritual and the Steagles that we're going to go back to because purple and gold is the, the color of his, his college team too, the, UW, the University of Washington Huskies, also in Seattle. So we have these through lines tied. And also there they're with purple and gold, we've got the 45. 45 is important because... Donald Trump's the 45th president of the United States. And uh, we have Donald up here matching chiefs, 50-50, 112-112, 31 And then, of course, the inverse, 32 and 23 of each other. These are real, real synonymous terms because he's right now, he's the commander-in-chief of the United States. Um, and uh, so we'll come back to all this, but what's... What's also curious is that on February 2nd this year, what, the reason why that date, remember waiting for tonight was Jennifer Lopez's phraseology that she was using with the song. She's waiting for tonight. There's a lineup of events where Groundhog Day is on the same day every year at Gobbler's Knob. That's where Punxsutawney Phil, the stupid friggin' animal that they, that they glorify on Groundhog's Day, pops his friggin' head up every year. And notice how Gobbler's Knob is 122, 50, 202, and 67. Groundhog Day also shares 50 and 67. Okay? Kansas City is 122 and 67, shared with Gobbler's Knob. San Francisco is 122 and 50, 202, and 76. So it's, again, the inverse of 67. Bart Chilton is 122, 50, and 67. So Bart Chilton everybody was the CFTC commissioner. I've got CFTC up here too. We got 76 and 22, the, the year zero ritual, which, which Bix has always supposed he might be in, in witness protection or something is, and maybe he is, I don't know. I, I, his, his name certainly locks step into this whole ritual scenario. And, uh, importantly, he, he was, he was, uh, he died last year of pancreatic cancer, they said. I actually didn't even put pancreatic cancer in here, and I don't know if, it, if it's gonna return anything, but maybe it will, I'm just pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic had something just on, on its own. Pancreatic was, yeah, 45 as well. And you've got the 71 that matches up with the CDC, right? The CDC is what's in the news right now with the spread of the coronavirus and how that might be going uh going through the news and remember guys anytime we see a 27 or a 72 or a 36 or a 63 
That's all real important for the V steganography based off of the golden ratio that we use. Okay. And, and again, what, what's, what's being hidden in the space force technology that's coming out. All this is, is economic, again, ec kind of an economic collapse argument tied together with very, very rapid pace disclosure of what's happening as long as you know where to look and how, and how to decode it. If you guys also look, Shakira, who was in the Super Bowl halftime show, is 67 and 122 and 50, just like Gobbler Snob. And it was her birthday and she turned 43. 43 is an interesting number as well because the last time the Seahawks won the Super Bowl, the, it was also February 2nd. The last time the Super Bowl was on Groundhog's Day was February 2nd of 2014. And they won with 43 points. And if you go back to Seahawks, um, I didn't type it in. I didn't type that one in here. If you type in Seattle Seahawks, you get a value of 43. See how they do it? They, they were the perfect ones to do that. Somehow, again, in, and the reason, again, I didn't even close this out because there's so much going on, guys. I'm sorry if it's a little bit scattered. I'm doing my best to follow my script here. Um, Kansas City Chiefs, 50 years, of, uh, 50 years later after NASA had landed on the moon, none other than the moon, remember Warren Moon and this whole 1979 Joe Montana moon ritual that we covered more in our last video. Um, that stuff uh, kind of all plays into the NASA. We haven't been back to the moon since the whole JFK era because we've had the secret space program skunk work stuff going on in the background. And again, I've got skunk works, which is Lockheed Martin's program 36, 108 and 63. 36, 63 is the inverse, 108, remember? Uh, and Phantom Works, we've got, we don't have anything except for 151, which is kind of a, of a different tree of, of, of gematria that we won't tie those values in, but I did include it with 56 uh, because I think 56, as it relates to Catherine Austin Fitz's Fazabee 56, is very relevant to what we're seeing play out with the economic collapse. We have 45 over here, 117 and the 22 for year zero. But what's interesting to me and where we're gonna, where we're gonna draw some, I'm gonna draw a conclusion here is Boeing's Phantom Works is why we're seeing this year around 2-2, all of the issues with Boeing because as we see, Boeing's even having more problems with a 767 landing gear failure yesterday. And what's interesting is, is that's where all these 67s that I was pointing out earlier kind of connect to the stories. Um, we're seeing a lot of 67, 76 on this side, right? Kansas City, Bart Chilton, uh, Gobbler's Knob. So we're seeing all of this stuff being timed with the Boeing collapse. Go back and watch the, the, the video where the Seahawks lost to the Packers, again, in this playlist here. So you can kind of see how that's all playing out. Uh, but, uh, and what's also interesting about the 151 is it's down with Brett Kavanaugh, Phantom Works and Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh's hearing was being run when FASB 56 got snuck through. It was the diversion. And there you find the 52 and 52, okay? 50 years separated Kansas City Super Bowl wins, 50 years of NASA not going to the moon, 50 years of silence in the Skunk Works and Phantom Works program is, is what we're tying together here, guys. That's why that 50 year span matters. So if you go directly then to Super Bowl 50, not 50th of the modern era, just Super Bowl 50. This would be the 46th of the modern era, right? It was played at Levi's Stadium, remember, in San Francisco. That's, so that's the tie to that. Tying it back to 50, 52, Super Bowl 52, where, where we've got Boeing, San Francisco's the inverse, and they got the 25, the JFK assassination in Dealey Plaza, which has 108, just like the divine ratio, 
which ties it through the V steganography, 45 for the president and 54 for Super Bowl 54. This was a very significant Super Bowl ritual, guys, for all these 52s, 54s to line up. Um, and then also to show the Alan Greenspan connection. You've got 45, 45, 99, 127, 55, which is just V steganography, V, V, two, two Vs. And then you've also got Steve Jobs matching up. And who, and who else but Satoshi Nakamoto matching up with Alan Greenspan. Alan Greenspan matches Satoshi Nakamoto, just like Bix's theory suggests, with 224 and 55 and 55. And then he argues that Steve Jobs was probably involved, and I would agree. I would agree that he was probably involved with whatever technology we're seeing come out. And of course, with this Joe Montana guise, this ritual uh, of the Super Bowl that, that we saw play out right in front of our eyes, if you go through Bix's theories, guys, the Titanic is involved with all of the bankers that oppose the central banking system tied to all of these 50s and all this ritual for this year. Um, and what gets really crazy is when you go back up here and tie Apple, Steve Jobs' company, to, to, the, to the Nazi component, you get year zero, year zero with the 22. That's kind of what we're talking about with the 22, meaning with the year zero, year zero, the CFTC is down here. But Nazi, Apple, they share components with Donald and Chief, our chiefs, right? And so we're seeing these harmonic signatures of these words all line up around these times. And it makes you wonder what got co-opted along the way to where we got to where we're at. Um, so moving along with the Super Bowls, once you get to 52, this is where the Glass-Steagall ritual comes in again, where Glass-Steagall Act uh, plays into, in, in, into this because um, the Steagles, when the Philadelphia and uh, Philadelphia Eagles and Pittsburgh Steelers after World, or during World War II, while the Nazis were fighting, uh, had to combine because they didn't have enough players, they became the Steagles. And we, we have nothing other than the Glass-Steagall Act that, uh, did I not type that one in either? I might have to type that one in. Bix, by the way, Michael Dunn, CD and company, perfectly match up on three of the ciphers for the, for the, uh, for the Tesla, for the Tesla tie in there. Um, But Glass-Steagall was the other was the other one. I, I didn't type that in. Also 36, 216, which is the triangular number for 666, of course. And 81, which was, of course, the day that this eclipse uh, in, um, I guess it was not, it uh, wasn't the eclipse th that year. August 1st had significance for something, but I'm forgetting what it was. So um, anyway, we're, 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 we're kind of rifling right through here. Um, the Glass-Steagall Act, it was played because, and what was interesting about that Super Bowl is it was played in the Glass Stadium of U.S. Bank. And so the Eagles being established in 1933, as we've talked about, correlating with the Great Depression period, uh, was a signal back here, even that this uh, it, at Super Bowl 52 that we were probably facing an economic collapse, and this is where you start getting the wall involved, right? The wall is 36 108. Donald Trump's wall, um, believe it or not, just fell. Oh, I remember where it was. Here it is just fell down five days ago before the Super Bowl started. Is, the, is this an indication that Wall Street is about to come down? Because Wall Street on here is... I didn't put that one on here either, just a sec. Th 
36, 63, 135, just like Glass-Steagall. So all of, these, all of these ciphers start to coalesce into the same you know, harmonic patterns, guys. Um, why this matters and why, why we're tying this all to the, why the economy is, remember I was telling you that we would get back to Tesla and the burning of Tesla, right? It's interesting how they've played out Tesla battery ignition ignites and driver killed after vehicle crash and burst into flames. This happened after the after the Tennessee Titans had had lost. But as we've been seeing, Tesla's tied to this whole meteoric rise in in the economy lately. Um, if you didn't see today, Tesla went up to like 960 bucks a share. They've they were they started back in October at $250 a share and they've rocketed up all the way and then kind of crashed 100 100 bucks in seconds later on and uh, a lot later on in the day both of these articles are from today that i'll link okay and uh why does this matter well because when we come back to the coronavirus situation where we're looking at george gammon's video if you watch this video which i'll also link he explains all the factories are over in china essentially if this is if China's go, I'm gonna. This is a truncated version. You should really watch this video to get the whole extent. Starting around the 9:15 mark uh, is where you can get this bulk of this information. But if we've quarantined off China from being able to trade with us, and they're the ones that send us stuff for in, in is as he's put here for our money and our dollars. But we're not gonna buy stuff from them anymore if the United States starts to get starts to get weary about products because of coronavirus sticking to things. We're just starting to hear stories about it sticking to smooth surfaces and living for up to five days. And so if that can't happen, China can't get money from us because we won't be buying stuff. They won't be sending us anything. Thus, they can't send our money into their own uh, People's Bank of China account to pump liquidity into their stock market to keep things normal this exchange won't be happening. They also won't be sending anything into the foreign exchange markets uh, in order to, to circumvent anything from the United States because th there will be sanctions, again, on, on trade. And this is going to be a real interesting thing to see come out, guys, because as we're seeing, a lot of these terms line up, like uh, CNOV, we've got 254s and 218s. Again, just like the 81, um, with Glass-Steagall and the 81 down here with Wizard was, was one of the other ones, but, uh, oh, the wall, the wall was the one we were just looking at. And again, the wall just blasted over. Did, did we see the stock market start to come apart right then and there, right? Um, another thing before we move on too far, um, this this story here in Forbes, which which Bix Weir also showed on his channel back in December, I'd never seen this, but Jamie Dimon is worth 1.7 billion, and he's the 17 number 1717 richest person in the world, which I just thought was interesting uh, as it relates again going back to some of these 17s. 17s. Oh, look at that. He got 71 for the pancreatic cancer from Bart Chilton. Uh, but 17 was one of the one of the uh, and the 71 with with Alan Greenspan, of course. Um, okay, again, Greenspan being Satoshi Nakamoto, it's ridiculous. You've got 55, 55, 224, 224. I think Bix is on to something. By the way, guys, Bitcoin is 45, 36, 72. So it's got the 3672 um, denotation, just like the golden ratio here. And also ties in uh, with the 45th president of the United States, the president who's going to be in office when it comes about, I guess, right? Um, Anyway, 
what this, why this matters in terms of, we're going to get to, into the Joseph Farrell stuff here real quick, uh, and then we're probably going to be closing out this video because that these are some of the points, these are most of the points that I wanted to make. Remember, the through line here, guys, is there's something happened on a click over of the second now. Year zero is 22. The numerology is all 22 that matches up, okay? Number two is the Super Bowl was a ritual for all of it, right? You've got the silver and Emerald City Tesla paradigm stuff going on at halftime. And then literally in the Super Bowl itself, the commander in chief, Chief Seattle, right? Chief Seattle, the one that, you know, the Emerald City is, so the Chiefs win, it's tied to the tied to Seattle. What I'm arguing here is maybe Seattle has a part to play in Super Bowl 56 as well as it relates to FASB 56 and Phantom Works, Boeing's division, like just like Skunk Works, based in Seattle. You're starting to see how these, these Super Bowls are all woven together, and it kind of all starts back with the last Groundhog's Day one, okay? When the, when the Seahawks won it last. Andy Reid, by the way, is connected to Super Bowl 52 as well because he used to be the, the Eagles coach for a long, long time, right? So um, you've got all these these connections in play here. And after after all of this, we have the coronavirus playing front and center with an economic collapse warfare scenario. We're going to get into, again, Babylon's banksters, which we've referenced in the past. Uh, if you go back to this playlist about the Earth Control Grid Network. And uh, we're going to see a couple things as it relates to why this, this coronavirus stuff kind of matters in terms of a trade war. Because one of Joseph, Ar Joseph Farrell's article, articles, not this one, um, but this one from the other day. I'm going to reference this one as it relates to especially uh, George Gammon's video is that suspiciously there was a $900,000 cache of $1 bills that were caught at the US, uh, US Customs Border Patrol, or caught by the US Customs and Border Protection Agency at Falls Port. And um, this happened February 3rd, the night of the Super Bowl, basically. So he was, he, Joseph Farrell's writing about something that happened uh, prior is what is what he's getting at here and he's blogging about this because what he's talking about the primary motivation behind this being is potentially the coronavirus because if you're going to again incite this thing for spread if there's some if there's some stuff with the trade war that's going on as as uh and we've got this necessary detente in the easing of strain, which is the easing of strained relations, especially in a political situation through verbal communication. This is what we've got going on with China. It's 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 necessary easing of hostility, but we've also got laws that we're putting into play, like like actually Bix Weir's also pointed out with force majeure, with unforeseeable circumstances of someone not fulfilling contract because you know basically acts of God. Um, being put into place. And uh, this is all really important because the chemical warfare that's happening with Tianjin, the, the explosions that were happening at, in, the Texas, in the Texas chemical plants are all indicative of this secret Star Wars space program being installed in space and it just becoming you know, known to us now. I'll bring up this one again, too. Um, it's interesting that Pepsi was... Anyway, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. The, but the, the, what, what, Joseph Farrell's, what Joseph Farrell's talking about with this $1 bill circulating within, you know, if it were to get through the United States Border Patrol is the fact that it might have coronavirus on it and, and could spread because ones are what we get in change. Because that's the question. Why wouldn't it be 10, 20s or 50s or $100 bills if you're gonna to go to all the trouble, you're gonna print 
but that would be the argument, right? As, as, uh, as he's talking about. And if this happens, then we have a situation where this becomes a reality with George Gammon's situation because the United States would certainly stop buying everything from there. They'd become really suspicious really, really quick. So um, the stuff with Tesla is happening as it relates to that too because, well, as he also talks about in the video, I'll just go back to Gammon's video here real quick. He goes through he goes through some graphics here. Yeah, like starting right here. The 11 minute and 25, 25 minute mark. Um, where everything's shutting down. We're seeing all this stuff in the news, right? Plants are shutting down. Car plants specifically. Teslas are being built in mass over there if there's no demand for it, right? And, and so you start to see where all of this massive liquidity injection that he's talking about China's putting into the economy is coming from. And what we're, we're doing the same thing with the repo markets, as Vix Weir has also pointed out, uh, that, we're, that we're getting massive price hikes when we should be getting massive price drops. Boeing and Tesla. How long can this go on? I don't know. Um, I think there's something really keen with FASB 56 and Super Bowl 56. Again, uh, the, the Pepsi the Pepsi sponsor at the Super Bowl was really interesting to me too because we've talked on this channel also about Sirius. Oh my goodness. These, these things are just collapsing out. I don't know why this happens. This happens all the time with this these videos, doesn't it? But serious with the red shift, blue shift, going through the different golden, silver, bronze ages, which also lines up with the Statue of Babylon, Daniel Daniel's timeline, and the Yuga cycle. And so I don't know what period of time they're conveying in this, right? We're definitely not in the Silver Age, but we're we've um, it's interesting that they continue to use the serious symbology too, which is what the Pepsi logo is. It's actually what the Korean and the Korean flag is too. Um, but uh, to kind of close this out, guys, we're going to tie the coronavirus stuff back to the Babylon's banksters. I'm going to read an excerpt from page 31. It's called China's Money. It's a sec section three of this preamble. Um, they, they talk about the, the world order over in China, the Oriental secret societies being run by the Lee family and the clan and, and Joseph Farrell goes in on page 30 to say the clan is ancient with strong ties going back millennia, both to government and finance. The clan is moreover connected with a secret society whose activities in turn are connected with a, a cult religious activity, B criminal business organization and activity. C, assassinations, blackmail, infiltration, and government and fin of finance. And the clan is, uh, number three, the clan is clearly connected to a mathematical model of economic and credit activity, implying hidden interest in developing such formally explicit models. And finally, four, the model is the culprit responsible for current economic meltdowns, which has affected primarily the institutions of the Anglo-American financial elite. So that last statement there is what he's gone into in this book in proving with the credit default swaps and the derivative bubble that we've got and, and silver being the biggest derivative bubble of them all, of course, has to do with all, all of this Tesla era paradigm change technology that you're seeing with the Emerald City rituals. And that he's tying it back to the Chinese being at the heart of creating the mathematical models for it. Um, so, Ellen Hodgson, actually, Ellen Hodgson Brown actually is quoted in the next section where he says, from her book, Web of Debt, where it, it, she says, uh, China has a government issued currency and a system of national banks that are actually owned by the nation. According to Wikipedia, the People's Bank of China is unusual in acting as a national bank, focusing on the country, not the currency. That's why they're, that's why they're boom, 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 boom 
funneling a ton of money into this situation over here when you've got this coronavirus outbreak. The notion of national banking as opposed to private central banking goes back to Lincoln, Kerry, and the American nationalists. Uh, Henry C.K. Liu di uh, distinguishes the two systems like this. A national bank serves the interests of the nation and its people, and a central bank serves the interests of private international finance. And that's what this model is actually showing right here. Now, um, why this is all interesting, again, is if you go over to the gold bar mystery of China and how it ties into Bix Weir's Road to Ruta theory as well, you will be astonished at all of the connections that it seems this Lu or, or this Li dynasty or the, the Li clan over in China who runs, it seems, a lot of the shadow banking warfare that happens between them and the United States and maybe they're central to a lot of this trade war jargon that we've seen. Um, but you start to unfurl that there's something going on with the gold related reconciliation and what Shakira represented in the Super Bowl ritual as well with her coming back onto stage and, and maybe reconciling some of this gold silver situation. But I definitely think, of course, that the ratios, as Bix Weir's talked about, them being 88 to 1 now are going to write themselves based on what's about to come. What do I forecast? Well, uh, I forecast that they are going to continue to use techno technology. As we've talked about, J.P. Morgan weaponizing Wardenclyffe. Why would J.P. Morgan pull the plug on such a, on such a scheme like Nikola Tesla's, which was, of course, oh, just a second here. get him back up here just so you guys can have the meme as as joseph farrell's going in here he's arguing for the fact that jp morgan had access to the tunguska uh, to the tunguska weaponry that nikola tesla um that nikola tesla likely created in my opinion based on what i've read about um what this freaking event was and the bald spot that still occurred that, that's still there in, in its place um but uh in this starting at page 137 he goes in and, and basically explains through the court documents that jp morgan had not really pulled the plug on the project of wardenclyffe because they didn't think that they could meter the technology uh but it was because as they describe all the way through page 139 here, they they likely took the technology and reappropriated it, which is really where Hurricane Sandy comes into play. And we go back to the Gematria, where we get 63, 18 again for Sandy, 27 and 72. Those numbers that they love to use for the rituals. Like... Uh, like, huh, I'm not going to pull the pentagram back up, but you guys have seen seen the measurements enough times in the just in this video that, you know, where the DTCC was involved, where the uh, where um, oh goodness, where was it? Sorry, guys, I'm getting a little bit. Oh, Michael Dunn and CD and Company involved with the destruction of uh, 35 trillion in US bonds, if I'm saying that correctly. So guys, what we have here also the RLSW 183627, which is the name of basically the umbrella corporation that's supposedly partaking in this whole, this whole coronavirus warfare is in play here somehow with all of these terms um i i am honestly exhausted now after today because i've i've tried to put this together in the best coherent way possible tying it back to bix weir stuff without actually you know giving away the content that's behind his paywall there but um 
guys, I, I, I really do see the evidence here at very least is all I'm trying to surface at the now of the 2020 year zero meme being something that actually means something more than you might think. Um, continue to follow Joseph Farrell's blog because the implications will become much clearer uh, as time goes along. If, you, if you're reading Giza Death Star, look out for the numbers 119, 55, 17, 50, 108, 45, 54, um, everything we've everything we've kind of talked about as it relates to these common threads, um, it all it all connects. It all connects to the the old secret Nazi contingent. Of course, if you go back to the the Puerto Rico situation where the Vatican took control of this country as a corporation, this was only after they had assassinated uh, Abraham Lincoln, and the whole NASA thing. That, uh, five years after the fact, right, or six years after the fact. This, this goes into play because Lincoln died in 1865. This was 1871. And then Kennedy was assassinated in 18, or 1963. Six years later, NASA goes to the moon um, to hide all of these things behind steganography and symbology. The moon card, by the way, in tarot is illusion, uncertainty, secrecy, mystery, lunacy and madness, half-truths, hidden truths, Hints, suspicions, flux, women's mysteries. Again, with J Lo and all the women that were there on stage, and the ISIS, the ISIS tide uh, symbology. The subconscious, fearing the shadows, reflection of the truth, filtering the truth, truth, and Chinese whispers. I thought that one was real curious with the moon. The moon is the number eighteen card too, by the way. What do we get in? Where do we get all these eighteens? And COV virus, right? Uh, we've we've uh, got it. We're, we're eighty-one. The reverse with the wizard. Money, which is just the illusion, right? <sighs> so anyway, guys, hopefully you can you can find some of these terms helpful. Um, some of the steganography around the letter V is becoming more vast with the daily news than I can even keep up with. And, uh, the, you know, today was an exhausting day, to, to, like I was saying, to, to say the least, as I was going through how, how to connect some of these dots. And I, I really do encourage you to watch this FASB 56 story. I'm going to be doing much more on this channel as it relates to FASB 56 because the word's got to get out more on this, I guess more than anything, because it does relate to two years from now in 2022, where we've got Super Bowl 56 and Phantom Works at Boeing being stirred up somehow. In my opinion, that's what I see in the numbers. Not a, you know, I'm not a fortune teller, but uh, year 2022, Donald Trump's still gonna be president. He may probably, um, we will see guys. But uh, unless I've got anything else, I guess I think uh, watch for more Boeing headlines. They're going to continue and watch the news with the coronavirus stuff. Don't really get too scared of it. Don't worry. Don't fear. Um, it's all part of the secret war is all you can really look at and, and arm yourself with knowledge. And, and that's and that's the best thing I can give you. So anyway, guys. Love everybody's way. Um, I'm going to kind of end this video here and hopefully, you know, kind of absorb the rest of the week and maybe I'll come up with something else to pull, you know, to pull together. Um, I'm going to be reading some more books pretty soon. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably have maybe some more of the content with the ancient stuff to come back around to as well with, with a lot of the Hebrew and, uh, and watchers stuff stuff that we've gotten into just a little bit as well as it overlaps with uh, the falsified history. So we're going to uncover all that this year, guys. I love you all, and uh, I'll, I'll see more of you soon. Thanks.